All right. Had a request for <clears throat> learning about some animal tracks, so see what I can do. Not my strongest subject, but I know a little bit, so I'll share what I know. Um, there are four kind of major types of tracks that you can find. I mean, obviously there's lots of different animals and you can try to identify what animal there is by the actual track, but sometimes in the mud or the sand or the dirt or the snow, you don't really get a good track. So you might not be able to see exactly the footprint, but the set of tracks that it left might help out, right? So let's focus on the sets of tracks and then I can maybe point you in the right direction uh, from there. So some of the sets of tracks that you'll find depend on how the animal travels. Um, there are four sets, all right, and I'll try to show you what I mean. Uh, the first are animals that walk in a straight line. Um, if you think about how an animal is built, animals that have legs that are a lot longer um, or long considered compared to like how their body is, um, they would leave straight line tracks. So think about how you walk. Uh, when you walk and leave footprints behind, it's pretty pretty straight because your legs are pretty long compared to the rest of your body. So other animals that would also leave straight line tracks would be things like dogs, cats, coyotes, um, anything that has long legs compared to its body, right? Um, so a pair of straight line tracks kind of look like people tracks or dog tracks. So we, here we have an example of my footprints, which are straight line footprints. That's kind of what we're talking about there. Here we have another example of straight line footprints. These are actually from my dog this morning. You can see how they start to go off and wander. And then you can see the footprints of the human that was walking the dog. But I definitely know those are my dog. As we get closer, because the snow is walking away, or washing away, I should say, um, it's hard to see exactly the footprint, but that straight line pattern, you can tell it's definitely some sort of animal that walks in a straight line pattern. And since I was there, I know it was a dog. Now, another set of tracks, besides the straight line tracks we were just talking about, would be animals that wobble. Now think about animals that might have a short leg compared to the size of their body. Now we're talking about things like raccoons and skunks, muskrats, uh, things like that. They would leave tracks a little bit differently and I'm gonna try to maybe make some tracks in the sand to simulate that. Now, if I was an animal that wobbled, I might leave wide looking tracks. And I tried to make some in the sand area right here. You can kind of see that they kind of wobble. Now, apparently I was just walking, making wider steps. But if I got down on all fours and kind of wobbled that way, you know, that would be a little bit of a example of how to make tracks like an animal that wobbles. You can see how wide they are and how, you know, that wobble effect kind of happens there. Now, another set of tracks you might see is something that looks something similar to this. These are animals that hop. These might be squirrels and rabbits. And when we look at actual footprints, you can see the difference between them, but something like this. Now I made this with my hand, uh, just to give you an idea of kind of the track that you're trying to look for. And then last but not least, you've got animals that bound. Now this is different than just hopping because they have their front legs and their uh, back legs leaving tracks, but they're almost in the same spots and it's hard to tell which one was which. These are animals like weasels, um, otters, fisher cats. And I kind of left them next to each other. So you can see an example of that kind of like bounding motion that up and down kind of like that versus these animals here that just kind of hop from spot to spot 
Now, when I'm doing any kind of learning, I usually refer to some sort of a field guide like this. Peterson guides are my absolute favorite. Uh, in this book, there are so many different things, so much stuff. It's a great resource. You can see that it gives you the print. It tells you kind of like the distance and how long they should be. It tells you kind of like the shape that they could be in. Um, it tells you what their scat or poop kind of looks like. Um, so this is a, a great, great book. You can kind of see how thick it is and there's a whole bunch of stuff. And they make guides like this for just about anything. Uh, the other kind of guy that I like to use sometimes is kind of like just a little uh, fold guide, kind of like a little pocket guide. Um, you can bring those out to different places. Um, you can see that there are different tracks here. A lot of the deer stuff, those would be straight lines. And when you start looking at uh, toes and stuff, that's great. But when you start looking at rabbits, uh, the ones that hop anyway, you know, those kinds of tracks, um, if you can see a track and it's really hard to see the toes, you're probably looking at a rabbit. If you can see very easily identified toes, then you are probably looking more like at a squirrel. And of course, I have to try to find the, my squirrels here. There we go. Um, chipmunk's a gray squirrel. You see those toes right there? That's going to be different compared to a rabbit. You're not going to see those, those toes. Uh, when you're looking at animals that wobble, you're definitely looking at porcupines. You're definitely looking at uh, woodchucks. You're definitely looking at some of these other animals too. There we go. You're looking at the skunk. You're looking at the muskrat, the raccoon, the possum, etc. But when you're looking at animals that bound, animals that bound, that otter is one. Then you might get the weasels in there and the minks. Um, and then another one people ask me a lot is, well, how do you tell the difference between something like maybe it's a bobcat or maybe it's a fox? How do you know? Well, cats can do this really cool thing that retracts their claws. So if you see a print like that, that's probably more of a cat versus dog prints like a fox. Those are going to have claws there and you're not going to be able to see... Um, those claws on a cat print. So if we go over to like what a coyote print might look like, you know, they can't retract those claws. So those things are always going to be there. And that's an interesting fact as well. All right. I think that's what I got for tracks and <laughs> my little sand lab here. And uh, cool. If you have any other questions, let me know.